Good Wednesday evening and welcome to Wednesday night Bible study for River Bend Pentecostals. Uh, Lord willing, this will be the last service we have to miss for a while. The weather is supposed to get better and hopefully uh, we'll be uh, back to a normal schedule next week. I want to begin this Wednesday night. There's a couple of people getting on. Uh, I want to begin this Wednesday night with prayer. There's several things that we need to pray about tonight. We want to pray about our time together, and uh, we want to pray uh, with the Lord's hand this upon this night and upon everybody that has to be out in this weather and keep the power going and everybody that's working in it, highway workers and county workers and city workers, keep them safe. And uh, we uh, want to remember uh, Sister Betty Halterman's sister and their family and uh, we want to remember sister nadine remember robert white brother mckinney please remember him and sister virginia brother dole and sister norma sister barker that that's your family and uh want to pray for those that are still working in the medical field um, the virus is still uh, an issue a problem and we want to remember those that are working want to remember miss charlotte manley um, I want to remember Sister Heidi. She's going to have to have surgery for a broken foot. And uh, we want to remember Brother Duncan. Many of you know him. He attends the Morehouse Church. And uh, I understand that he lost his house in a fire last night. It seemed like I saw there were three or four people connected to us on social media that lost their houses in fires in the last day or two. We want to remember them. And if you think that you have something that might help these folks, uh, most of them have lost everything, and if you think you can help them, please feel free to do that. And uh, we want to remember our services on Sunday, that uh, we uh, are, have freedom and liberty and the Holy Ghost. And uh, we want to uh, uh, remind you that we have several unspoken requests, and uh, we have several new worshipers that we need to pray for their uh, roots to be sunk down. And, uh, we pray that everyone will get back in the flow and the swing of uh, living a life for God. So let's pray together right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before you because we believe in you and we trust you. And you've never failed us. You've always been there for us. And we believe you're going to continue to be. We pray over every request that we've mentioned here tonight. We pray for this time together. We pray for everyone that's watching us. We pray for everyone that would like to be in church with us, to be able to come to the house of God. We pray for the sick and the afflicted and those that are depressed and discouraged and downtrodden and downhearted. We pray for those who uh, are working out in this weather and trying to get the roads cleared, and, uh, the, the power and the plumbing and the water departments and everyone that is working very diligently and to make sure that our lives continue and that we stay warm and protected. I, I pray for our elders. I pray for our church. I pray, Lord, for our new worshipers that we're so excited about that are coming to the house of God to worship with us. And pray that each one gets connected and gets their roots sunk down deep and all built on a solid foundation. I pray that we do our part tonight to help contribute to that. I pray, God, that you'll bless everything that's said or done tonight. And let it all be done for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. A few announcements that we want to give you. Uh, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock a.m., uh, barring a uh, uh, change in the schedule, we're at 10 o'clock at the River Bend Pentecostals on 1031 Mill Street and also on River Bend Pentecostals Live on Facebook Live. We will have... Uh, River Bend Kids at 10 o'clock a.m., ages 4 to 11. They'll be meeting in the River Bend Kids room. And River Bend Ignited, our student ministry that uh, ministers to students age 12 to 18, they will be meeting in the sanctuary on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And then the adults will be meeting in the family center for our elements class, which is foundational scriptural teaching. And uh, I encourage you to come and be a part of that if you haven't. You're really missing. It's an informal atmosphere. We have coffee and donuts, and we uh, uh, have a good. It's it's more interactive. 
we sit around, we set the tables up in a huge circle and, and we usually have a, a decent crowd there and we have a really good time, a lot of interaction and I'm sure that you will enjoy it if you come. And then at 11 o'clock a.m. we're going to have our worship service with our powerful praise team leading us in worship and our ministry team helping the leading of the service and by the help of the Lord we'll be ministering in this service and uh, as it stands now all scheduled activities will resume this week and uh, uh, throughout the week prayer meeting small groups Bible study etc will be back in schedule and I uh, want to remind you for the River Bend kids that are interested um, the very next Wednesday night that we're able to be back in house all meeting together we will have the pizza party for the River Bend kids so that's been canceled for two Wednesday nights in a row now and we will certainly want to uh, bring that to fruition for all of our River Bend kids and uh, reminding you that next Sunday not this Sunday but next Sunday uh, February the 28th brother Glenn Massey from Alexandria Louisiana will be speaking for us in our 11 o'clock service and I'm asking you to please make every effort to be here. He's a tremendous faith preacher. You will be blessed. And we also want to be a blessing to he and his wife. So please come prepared to give a good offering and uh, uh, allow your faith to be built because you will be encouraged by the ministry of brother and sister Massey. I want to remind you tonight, if uh, you'd like to give in the offering and uh, perhaps your return your tithing to the Lord. Uh, we offer several ways to do that. The old fashioned mail way is P post office box 477, New Madrid, Missouri 63869. Then we have Givelify, which is our giving app. And uh, then we also uh, have the possibility to give through PayPal, which you can connect to that through our website at www.riverbendpentecostals.com. And uh, we certainly appreciate the faithfulness of the River Bend Pentecostals. Um, we're going to get into the Word of the Lord at this time. Uh, I feel like I have a, a pretty clear uh, picture that I want to paint of, of uh, something that we can strive for, shoot for, and uh, as we continue to grow uh, in our relationship with God. We're going to take our Bible study tonight from Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. And uh, uh, with the help of the Lord, we're going to break down the different things that the Lord shares through the prophet Jeremiah in this passage and see how it applies to our life. Verse 23, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. So the man who's wise doesn't need to glory in that wisdom, doesn't dispute that men do have wisdom, but that's not where our glory is. It says, neither let the mighty man, that's strength, men that are strong, glory in his might. We don't need to glory in it. People are strong. There are men and women that are strong, both physically, emotionally, and otherwise, but that's not where we glory. He said, let not the rich man glory in his riches. And there are, of course, people that are rich by whatever measurement rich is. But that's not where we glory. He said, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight saith the Lord. So the very beginning of verse number 23, the prophet prefaces this statements or these statements with this four powerful words, thus saith the Lord. Got to let you know right off the bat that is meant in the literal sense that Jeremiah is fixing to share something with the people of God that the Lord told him specifically to say. Thus saith the Lord. So we have to really focus our attention and what he's saying in this passage is very important as it comes straight from the mind and the heart of God 
into the spirit of Jeremiah who will speak it forth as thus saith the Lord. First, he gives a warning, and it's not so much a warning as it is a redirection because he re he's redirecting us from the three primary areas in which we, mankind, tends to glory. And those of you that were in service this past Sunday, you are going to be surprised, perhaps, to uh, uh, learn that that word glory means the same thing as praise that we spoke of earlier. It means to shine, something to think about. It's a connection that I wasn't looking for when I began to prepare this Bible study. But it says there is a redirection, a refocus, turning us from the three primary areas in which we tend to glory, which we being mankind. They are wisdom, might, and riches. Now here's the trouble with wisdom, might, and riches. They are temporal first, which means they don't last. Doesn't matter how much wisdom you have, uh, doesn't matter how strong you are or how rich you are, none of these things are eternal. None of these things are forever. But they are also conditional. And uh, I think this pandemic has made this truth even more clear because uh, no matter how wise you are, no matter how much wisdom that we might have, there's going to come a time when we don't know what to do. There's going to come a time when we don't know which direction to go. There is a limit to our wisdom. And then certainly we found out, I've heard several people who have been, uh, their bodies have been affected by the COVID-19 virus, have spoke of the difficulty in thinking and grasping. And, and we're finding out that our minds are subject to perhaps forces, if you please, that we don't have any control over. So we're finding out that wisdom is very limited, very limited. It is temporal and it is conditional. The conditions of the world in which I live, uh, certainly as age comes along, our minds tend to not be as sharp as they once were. And so now we see wisdom that once we perhaps glory then is now no longer. Then there's might and, and uh, I'll soon be 48 years old and and I uh, have always been a, a big fella and always uh, thought I could, uh, you know, I, I was pretty strong and I, I didn't have to ask for help to move furniture or, or things. But I'm noticing that uh, the things I once did, I can't do anymore because this fleshly strength, it fades. It, it is temporal. It is temporal. And then it's, of course, conditional because there's always going to be a limit to the strength of man. There's always going to be a, a place where you find something that you grab a hold of and you cannot move it. And then, of course, there's always going to be someone stronger than us. And then wisdom, strength, or might. Then the third one, riches, money. Uh, it can be stolen. It can lose its value. Uh, there's always someone with more money. Uh, several years ago, I was blessed and privileged to spend a week in Cuba and uh, I've told our people about it before. Our money is no good in Cuba. My debit card was no good in Cuba. I had to trade my money for their currency. And if they had no currency to trade, honest to goodness, a dollar bill bought you nothing in Cuba. So very quickly, whatever my riches were at that particular time, they, they, they were worth nothing. I, uh, uh, so it's, uh, uh, and then of course, uh, there's always the opportunity, stock market crashes, uh, God forbid some uh, natural disaster comes or someone perhaps uh, absconds with uh, uh, money from a bank or a business. It's happened in, in various and sundry situations and circumstances, but wisdom, might, and riches, they're temporal as well as conditional. But he is redirecting us because the Lord, I find that the Lord, perhaps not empirically or exclusively, but I feel that it's this way, that the Lord doesn't stop you or change you without offering something else. 
If he's going to change your direction, he's going to take you from point A and lead you to point B, as it were. Or if he's going to um, remove this from your life, it's because he wants to put something else into your life. So the word of the Lord comes through the prophet Jeremiah, and he says, it doesn't matter. If you're wise, you can't glory in wisdom. If you're strong, you can't glory in strength. And Or actually, rather than can't, he says don't. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the mighty man not glory in his might. And let the rich man not glory in his riches. He says, verse 24, notice this. He says, but let him that glorieth. And if you're around somebody, you can uh, turn to him and say, there's that ETH thing that pastor has talked about. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord. So he redirects us from that which is temporal and conditional to that which, notice, let him that glorieth, that he understandeth and knoweth. That's the ETH factor, which Tell, we learned in scripture that when we see ETH on it, it means continual. So the Lord is redirecting the minds and the hearts and the focus of men from that which is temporal and conditional to that which is eternal and continual. So the, he, the glory of man is not in man, but it is in God. And he wants us to understand him, and he wants us to know him, and he wants it to be a continual process. He that understandeth and knoweth me. This is continual. So the Lord is wanting to move us to something that is so far from temporal and so far from cir uh, circumstantial or conditional. He wants to move us into the eternal. That's where we're headed is into eternal. That's why we want to be born again because we want to see the kingdom of heaven and we want to experience, to gain, to have the confidence and security of eternal life. And uh, uh, the only way to do that is to be born again of the water and the spirit, which is something we continually teach and preach. Now, so the glory of the Lord, the things we're going to learn about the Lord are going to be continual. The things we're going to understand and know about the Lord, this is a continual process. Now, I, I'm, I'm really trying to uh, keep from getting too excited that I go off on rabbit trails and what have you tonight. But I want you to, to understand and to know, no puns intended, that the Lord wants us to continue, continually glory in the revelation and the power and the knowledge of the Lord. He wants us to continually do this. There, there is not a time when you reach the mountain. There are only plateaus that prepare us to continually climb. Remember, the Apostle Paul said, perhaps I've even mentioned this recently. He said, I'm instructed in all things, in all things, to be both full and hungry. So at the, at the same time, I know all I know of the Lord, and I've grasped all I've grasped of the Lord, and that is wonderful, and it's powerful, and it keeps me, and it blesses me, and it's beautiful. But at the same time, when I open the Word of God, there's more. There's something new. There's something more powerful. There's something more beautiful. There's some aspect of the Lord that He has revealed to me and shown me that He's right there. It's, it's not even uh, something that I have to look to find, but it's right there in that moment, the Lord. So I cannot glory in in me or in myself or my wisdom or my might or my money, but I can always glory in the Lord. So uh, according to Barnes commentary, I read this and I thought, man, I'm just going to use their notes for my notes, but uh, which I've done to some degree, but I give credit to them, Barnes notes. This redirecting, what I'm about to say, I didn't come up with on my own. I wish I had it. But what I'm about to say is incredible and so applicable to the time in which we live. This redirecting from the fallible, the temporal, conditional, to the eternal 
is the thus saith the Lord remedy for the healing of a nation. The healing of a nation. It was to a wounded world that the prophet Jeremiah came preaching and teaching and prophesying. A wounded people. It was a people that had no uh, consistency. They had no stability. They, they didn't trust each other. They didn't trust anybody. They didn't trust Jeremiah. They, they, uh, they were full of distrust and full of, of uncertainty. And, and they, didn't, they, they truthfully didn't even know. Uh, and Jeremiah, he, he falls in this. They, they really didn't even know that God was still around that God was still for them. And certainly they didn't like anything that the prophet had to say. So uh, it is to the healing of a nation that the Lord speaks to Jeremiah. Simply a shift of what's important, a shift of priority. And the terminology used here is a shift from what you aspire to, what you want we want to be wise. We want to be strong. We want to be rich. So those things we aspire to, and then when we achieve them, we want to glory in them. We want to glory in uh, uh, the, the things of the world. And there's nothing wrong with being proud of accomplishments and things that God has given you. But you have to have a clear understanding that they are temporal. And they're not my identity. They're not who I am. But my identity is in Jesus Christ. So notice this. Um, the healing of a nation. And I felt I needed to say this. A nation heals one person at a time. A nation heals one soul at a time as they gain the true understanding and knowledge of God. I'm not going to ramble off on it too long, but I've got to let you know that back in Sodom and Gomorrah, back in uh, Abraham's day, the Lord was looking, my Lord, the Lord was looking for a reason to save those people. He was not looking for a reason to damn them and to condemn them. He was looking for a reason to save them. He said that's the only reason he got Abraham involved in the discussion. Because at first he said, I'm going to destroy him, but I don't know whether I need to let Abraham know or not. Because I know what Abraham's going to do. He's going to intercede and he's going to stand in the gap. The Lord is not looking for a reason to damn and condemn anybody. He wants to save the whole world. You, we've got to get that in our spirit. He is not looking to be on the judgment train, but he came to seek and save that which was lost. We have got to be on the same page with the Lord. That's why we've got to understand that and knoweth him. This redirection from the fallible, the temporal, the conditional to the eternal is for the healing of a nation, and it'll happen one soul at a time. Let's talk about what understanding is. And uh, we, we're not going to be with you a whole lot longer, but I've, he, we've got a glory in understanding. He that glorieth, let him glory in understanding and knowledge of me, the Lord said. That, he said, I want you to understand me, and I want you to know me. Understanding. Here's what Barnes Notes has to say. That is the spiritual enlightenment of the mind. A spiritual enlightenment of the mind. So I began, I tried to look that up. I wanted to understand what it was. And it's simply this, the revelation of the truth. It is as the Lord reveals himself to you, the revelation of the truth, both spiritual and practical. Because the Bible tells us very clearly that the Lord has, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3, that the Lord has given us everything that pertaineth unto life and godliness. That's the practical and the spiritual. The Lord wants to, the things of the, oh, I don't want to get too excited, but I feel like I'm about to. The things of the Holy Ghost and the things of the Spirit, the things of the Lord are not only good for helping us spiritually, but they help us naturally. He wants to change everything about our life. It's not just about when I go to church, but it's when I wake up in the morning, and it's when I go to work, and it's when I go to school. The Lord wants to change me in every way, every way. So it is the revelation of truth, 
both spiritual and practical as it pertains to that which pleases God. It is as I'm led by the Spirit, I am shown, I learn, I am told what God wants, what God desires. And then I go where he wants, and I don't go where he don't want, I, where he doesn't want. Okay? I surrender my life to him, which leads us to knowledge. So understandeth means the Lord is continually showing me things, and it's things that make me better. All right? Everything the Lord wants to add to my life is to make me more like him. It's not to, to tear us down. The only time he has to tear us down is when he wants to build up something better. The Lord doesn't take it away without providing. It's like when the, the, the old covenant, he, he, uh, in the book of Hebrews, they continually said, but God having provided some better thing for us, the Lord always, man, the Lord is always wanting us to get better. The things the Lord brings into our life, even if they hurt, they're there to make us better better. So then it's knowledge. Understandeth and knoweth. Well, I really like what Barnes has to say about this. He said, the knowledge is the training of the heart unto obedience. The training of the heart unto obedience. It is simply this. It is a coupling, a agreement, a coming together of the revelatory power of God, the revelatory power of God, and the will of man. It is when my will, when I trust him so much that I completely give up. You see, when I understand, when he has shown me what is true, and I give up what I want for what he has for me, and I train my heart, and, of course, the scripture tells us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I train my heart to obey the Lord. I teach myself. I teach my heart to obey the Lord. It is a coupling of the revelatory power of God and the will of man, where I am trained, exercised, or molded into what he would have me to be. I want everything God has for me. I've preached about it before, but I, it was look, well, revelation. I have three more points and we're going to close, but I want to tell you this. When Bartimaeus came to the Lord, uh, after, of course, being denied uh, access to the Lord, he cried a little more louder, and, and Jesus Christ stopped and said, what will you have that I will give to you? Or what will you ask for me to do for you? And Bartimaeus says that I may receive my sight. But when I read it, I, it was a beautiful thing. Bartimaeus was blind and he wanted to see. But if Bartimaeus really knew what God had for him, if he really knew what the Lord had for him, he would have said, I want it all. I want everything you have for me, not just to see. Because when, when he opened Bartimaeus' eyes, it was to a whole new world that he was leading him to. It not not just... Uh, do I want to feel, uh, not just do I want to feel good today. I don't want to just feel good today, and I don't want to just get out of this little problem I'm in, and I don't want to just get this little blessing or that little blessing. I want it all. I want everything the Lord has for me, everything he's shown me. That's the understandeth. And so I train my life to follow his word and to to obey what thus saith the Lord into my life because I want to see my world healed. I want to see my family healed, my life healed. And that cannot happen unless I first begin to train my heart to obey God. Trained heart to obey God. Now the picture that the Lord paints of the understanding and knowledge of God is clearly displayed in three attributes. The Lord tells it himself, verse 24, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise, I do this, loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. These are the things 
my goodness, I wish I was in church right now. I'd probably take a lap because this is so exciting. The Lord said, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. This is what brings the Lord pleasure. This is what brings the Lord delight. This is what brings the Lord enjoyment to exercise loving kindness and judgment and righteousness in the earth. So what exactly is he saying here? I was hoping you would ask so I could tell you. He says, I like to exercise loving kindness. You know what that is? That is simply a readiness to show grace and mercy. A ready, he stands ready to show grace and mercy. How does that conflict with the picture of the Lord that so many try to paint that he's ready to pounce on you when you do wrong or he's ready to stand in there with this big uh, hammer of judgment to tear you down when you make a mistake? No, he said, that's not what I delight in. I delight in showing grace and mercy. That's not the only time the Bible talks about the Lord. He doesn't even stay mad long. When you do wrong, when his people do wrong, he doesn't stay mad long. He doesn't retain his anger forever. He delights in mercy. So loving kindness, simply a readiness to show grace and mercy. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost on us right now. A readiness to show grace and mercy. And so the things he shows you, the things you understandeth, the things he shows you is to lead you in the path where he can bless you not hurt you. He wants to bless us. That's what the Lord delights in. My goodness, we've got to see this. Readiness to show grace and mercy. So loving kindness is the manifestation of grace and mercy. Judgment. That's a word that scares us. Shouldn't scare us because it is not a ugly word. The Lord said, I delight in judgment. Well, somebody might think, all right, there's the part, you know, where thou shalt not, thou shalt not, and when thou shalt, when thou does, thou get slammed. No, that's not what it is at all. That word judgment doesn't even mean that right there. It means that the Lord is fair and just in everything to everybody. He says, I, I delight in being fair. I delight in in being, treating everybody the same, being the same. He has no respecter of persons. There is no respecter of persons in the Lord. He doesn't like white people better than black people. He doesn't like black people better than white people. He doesn't like brown people better. He doesn't like biracial people better. The Lord loves everybody because everybody's a soul. Everybody's a soul. That's what he died for. That's what he died for. And, and the, the world, he, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't uh, the worst sinner you can think of that does the most uh, heinous, horrible thing, the Lord loves them just as much as he loves you. He's fair. He is fair. He doesn't grade on the curve. He is fair and just in everything to everybody. This is, as loving kindness, is a manifestation of grace and mercy Judgment is a manifestation of truth. He is who he is. And he can't be anything different. He is I am. He says it up here. That I am the Lord. Okay? He delights in being God, being Savior, being Lord. He doesn't, de disobedience is what forces him into a place of having to be anything other than who he is, who he desires to be. He does not desire to be the, the carrier of damnation and punishment. He came to seek and save that which was lost. If the Lord is, if we're having to experience the wrath of God, it's not his fault. It's not his fault, but we won't get our minds right. Understandeth and knoweth. It all begins in our mind. So loving kindness, a readiness to show grace and mercy. Judgment, simply truth. He is who he is. He cannot deny himself. The angels, that's why I thought of this again last night at small group. And I, I've preached it and I'm going to say it again. That's why when worship starts happening, the devil leaves. There's bad spirits, ugly attitudes. The, Lord, the devil leaves. You want to know why? Because the devil has to acknowledge who the Lord is. Now, he'll tell us who the Lord is not. 
just like he lied to Eve in the garden. But when we begin to praise the Lord, the presence of the Lord comes in and the enemy has to say he is who he says he is. He is a God of grace and a God of mercy. The devil has no option but to worship the Lord. That's why Matthew chapter number four, when the Lord said, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. Because when you start talking about worship, the devil either has to leave or join in and worship. He did it in Legion. The man came running, fell down at Jesus' feet, said, I know who you are. I know who you are. He has to worship because the Lord is who he is. He never diminishes. He never increases because he is always the I am. And then, I love this one. And I'm coming to a close, last point, wrapping it up. Loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. He said, I delight in this. I looked up what righteousness was, and I began to uh, read the different uh, definitions and different things, and I came to a summarized definition. Righteousness. See, God is a God of covenant. He reveals himself to his people, his covenant people. All right? It was with Abraham that he made the first covenant. And then through his death, burial, and resurrection, he ushered in a new covenant, a better covenant. Remember the law made nothing better, but the bringing in of a better hope did. Righteousness. This is what the Lord delights in. When you understand him and know him, this is who you know him as. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong on us tonight. Righteousness. Look at this. Very simple. It's God's side of the covenant. Because a covenant is between two parties. And he made a covenant with his people. And we are grafted in and adopted. We are just as strong as strongly in covenant relationship with the Lord as Abraham was. But he does not keep our side of the covenant. He keeps his. Oh, Lord. And he delights in it. It brings him enjoyment. It brings him pleasure. It pleases the Lord to keep his word. And what goes without saying is he longs for us to keep ours. He longs to be in covenant with his people. Oh, that I might know him. Paul said in the book of Philippians that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to understand him and I want to know him. And what's the most beautiful thing? He wants me to. He wants me to. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. He is wise, but he can't glory in it. He has to choose not to. Don't let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. That's the Lord. That I am the Lord. And I exercise grace and mercy. I keep my word. And I keep my covenant. In the earth. This is not talking about who he is in heaven. It's talking about who he is in earth. And he says. For in these things. I delight saith the Lord. If you would, I want you to pray with me. I know there's somebody out there watching that this, this seems like a little foreign to us because it gives us a little bit of justification to live life our own way when we don't understand the Lord. 
but he wants us to keep knowing him and keep understanding him. It's not fair to willfully remain ignorant because you're missing out on so much. Yes, you get to live your own life and do your own thing and make your own way, but you're missing out on the abundance of life that God has for us. You're missing out on being a catalyst in the healing of our nation. This is the pathway to understand God, to come to know God and keep understanding him and keep knowing him. Train our hearts to follow him. Train our hearts to be obedient to him. I ask you to pray with me right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, I fail, I make mistakes, and I struggle, and I'm finding out my greatest failures have been when I didn't seek to know you, and I didn't seek to understand you, that I took uh, delight from you when I caused you to have to be my judge, when I caused you to have to be my flaming angel at the gate of Eden. God, when I disobeyed you, when I failed, and I refused to surrender my will and my heart to you, I reaped the benefits of that. I reaped the harvest of my bad decisions. It wasn't because you're a bad God, and it wasn't because that you decided to be mean to me because I didn't do it your way, but it's because I stepped away from your covering. I stepped away from your will. I stepped away, and and uh, as one writer said, we sold the whirlwind, and we sold the wind and reaped the whirlwind. God, I, I want to live every day of my life seeking to understand you more and seeking to know you more and realizing there's always more. There's always more. I don't ever want to grasp a hold of just what I have and and build an altar to it and forget the things that you have for me. I, I pray, God, to those that are of a of a honest heart and a hungry heart that you, Lord, will continue to reveal yourself to those that are watching with us tonight and hearing the word and reading the word and those that are reading the Bible in their own time. Show them, Lord. They want to understand you. They want to know you. They want to have a trained heart in surrendering their life to you and holiness, both here and in the spirit, both in the natural and in the spiritual. I pray, God, that we continue to see you grow. I pray, Lord, that we be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if you faint not. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions, you have any comments, need prayer. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. We're here for you. We love you. The Lord loves you together. And together, we're going to see the world healed through the power of the Holy Ghost. Good night. We love you.